G'day there guys, it's your boy I read Reddit back at it again with even more entitled parent stories. I hope you enjoy the stories, sit back, relax, throw more shrimps on the barbie, and just have a good time. Our first story is posted by user Humanoid Freak, titled, Hey Mr. Stranger, give my kid money and ice cream now. So, I'm at my local mall waiting for my ride. This lady with her daughter asks me if I have any change for her daughter to go on the horse ride. I say no sorry, and seconds later I'm craving ice cream. I go get it and pay with debit. I go back to the spot where I'm waiting for my ride. The lady sees me and is mad as heck. Excuse me, you said you had no change. I didn't. Then what's the bull crap here? She points to the ice cream. An ice cream? I'm being a smart butt now. How dare you buy that with the change that I asked of you? It's called debit, ma'am. Fine! Give my daughter the ice cream! You owe it to her! Nope. I walked away and she kept screaming at me. And then everyone clapped. Our next story is by user SquishyLover21, titled, I saw it on a John Wayne film, so I'm allowed to almost drown you. So. This happened when I was maybe 5 or 6, and I was kinda groggy and coughing up water for most of it, so most of what I heard was just muffled shouting and racist crap that my dad said afterwards. Anyway, here's what I can remember of the story. We went to live with my dad when I was 4, and my dad used to really love old western films. So one day, when he was watching this film called Hondo, where there's a certain scene where John Wayne throws a boy into a river to teach him how to swim, my dad thought this was great, and I vaguely remember him looking at me weird as I watched it with him. I was a native little kid, so I didn't think anything of it. Even when he said we were going to go for a walk at the local lake later, my young brain didn't put the pieces together. One second, I was stood looking at the ripples on the lake, made by birds. The next, I was immersed in cold, murky lake water. Unlike the river in the film, the lake was a lot deeper and had a lot of clay which my frantic attempts to get back up to the surface kicked up into a thick grey mist. There was also quite a lot of fairly large rocks, one of which I must have smacked my head against. It may have only been like 10 feet, but I was still very small as a kid, and absolutely freaked out since I'd never been swimming in a pool before. Unfortunately, my panic didn't last long, since the fact that I had swallowed quite a lot of water, coupled with the fact that I'd smacked my head, meant that I passed out pretty quickly. My saving grace was honestly this beautiful human being, a large black man who had been walking his very fluffy dog and saw what my dad did. If it hadn't been for this guy, I probably would have actually died. The first thing I remember, this guy knelt over me with his dog nuzzling my hand. I was coughing up a lot of water, so all I heard was muffled shouting as the dog kept pouring at me and nuzzling me with his very soft face. I was shivering and probably looked like a drowned rat. So when I finally stopped coughing, I just grabbed a hold of the dog and held onto its so fluffy, soft white coat for dear life. Meanwhile, my senses were slowly returning to me, and I came to realize that the shouting I was hearing was my dad screaming red-faced at my savior, calling him a pedophile and all sorts of racial slurs. And I honestly don't know what I would have done if now the very angry black man hadn't grabbed his phone and said that he was going to call the police. My dad grabbed me, ran to our car, and drove home so fast, I'm surprised we didn't crash. After we got home, my dad made sure I knew that if I ever said anything, I'd be put into foster care. I knew damn well how horrific that would be, since I knew people who'd gone through that. Better, one parent doling out punishment, than half a dozen older boys beating the crap out of me. Plus, my parents had never touched me in that way, so I was definitely not going to roll the dice on that one. A woman from social did end up visiting a while later because someone complained about possible domestic violence. But she was stupid and honestly believed that I was just a clumsy kid and the worst thing in my life was my dad's god-awful chicken and leek bake. So everything ended as well as it could've. I've never ever taken a bath since and still despise water, but it's not that much of a problem. So all in all it wasn't that bad, just a fairly interesting entitled parent story. After I finished typing this, I told this story to my girlfriend, and she told me that I would have been put into foster care if I had no other family members able to look after me. I could have just lived with my dad's parents. Those fudges lied to me! 
All those years, I was so scared of saying the wrong thing or someone noticing how I was always getting into scrapes and those fudges just protecting themselves from going to jail. Bloody hell of fire, my parents are the worst. Our next story was posted by user Cinnamon Evie, titled, Her kid almost killed a five-year-old me at the pool, and there's a twist in this tale. So this is a story that my dad told me about since I was five years old at the time but I especially remember one part of it, because that was the part where I nearly drowned. In the morning, during the weekends, the local swimming pool would host private swimming club called the Dolphins for young kids aged four to nine to teach them how to swim. The lessons lasted from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and during this time, they wouldn't let anyone in unless they were part of the Dolphins. My dad used to bring me to the Dolphins every Saturday morning, usually after the lesson was over. The kids would be allowed to have half an hour playtime in the pool before they went home. Some parents would sit on the benches next to the pool and watch them swim and others were in the pool with their kids. On this particular day, the lesson was about practicing holding our breath. After lessons, I decided to practice holding my breath underwater. The exercise I did was to try to sit on the bottom of the pool at the shallow end, which is only one meter deep, and stand up when I needed to take a breath of fresh air. But on this particular instance, I was feeling brave. So I sat and tried to hold my breath as long as possible. Suddenly, I heard a splash above my head and looked up and there was this giant rubber floaty mat above my head. This thing was as big as a queen sized mattress. I was running out of air, so I stood up and hit my head on the floaty. I tried to push it upwards, but this thing was ungodly heavy, especially for a five year old. I couldn't stand up so I, now I couldn't walk along the bottom of the pool. Now I began to panic. I tried to get out from underneath the floaty, but I couldn't swim yet. So I tried to crawl out, but I barely moved. I frantically tried to flap my arms, thinking that I was swimming, but I didn't move. My dad, who had been watching me, noticed my frantic splashing and dived into the pool, shoved the giant floaty mattress out of the way, and pulled me out of the water. As I surfaced, I heard another splash, ka -chow! and saw an 11-year-old boy, kid, fall off the floaty mattress into the water. The mattress was so god dang heavy because he was sitting on it. I started to sob from the shock and from inhaling chlorine water. The kid pulled himself out of the water and ran to the benches. Enter, entitled mother. She started screaming at my dad for pushing her precious angel into the pool. My dad is ticked and starts screaming back at her kid that plopped his floaty man on top of me and that I could have drowned. The lifeguard saw the whole thing and came over. Oi oi oi, what's the problem? Her kid dropped his float on top of Cinnamon Evie. She couldn't get out from it. She almost drowned. The lifeguard then said to the entitled mother, Did he do it deliberately or was it by accident? Entitled mother replies, Of course he did it deliberately! Why would her not? He was just playing. The lifeguard then says, You're not allowed to do anything that could endanger other swimmers. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. But why? My kid's allowed to do anything he wants. He sits on this mat on top of other people all the time and he never gets in trouble for it in other pools. So why is it an issue here? Oh, because it's dangerous. Especially to non-swimmers, ma'am. You can hear the gears in the Entitled Mother's mind turn as she processes what's just been said to her. If she can't swim, then she has no business being here. Why would anyone bring a kid to the pool if they can't swim? Because it's a dolphin. That's why, she's a dolphin, she can't swim. Are you an invalid? She is not a dolphin, she's a bloody kid. No, 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 no. The dolphin is the name of our swim club. She's taking part in swimming lessons. Though your kid must be part of the dolphins if he's here. No, my kid isn't part of those crappy dolphins. Suddenly, the lifeguard's eyes go wide. Plot twist. The entitled kid isn't part of the dolphins. He almost drowned me and he's not even allowed to be here in the first place. Then why are you here? I just wanted to take my kid to have some fun. Is that so much to ask without being wrongfully harassed? The swimming pool is closed to the public while the dolphins are on. You're not even allowed to be here. How did you get past the front desk? I can come here wherever I want. Why can't you just let my kid play? 
because there's other private lessons. Go home, mate. Then the entitled mother started spouting BS about how kids who can't swim shouldn't be allowed in the swimming pool and that we're selfish for hogging the pool to ourselves and blah, blah, blah. Apparently, the entitled kid shoved me back into the water and I freaked out again. After that, the lifeguard escorted them out while she and her kid were screaming obscenities at us. My dad then took me home and he put on Finding Nemo for me so that I would be less afraid of the water. Aw, oh, what a good dad. Bless his heart. So, our last story is posted by user Ravenholt79, titled, We Raised You, So Now You Should Let Us Live Off You Till You Die. This story is about my wife's parents and their retirement plan. Oh man, this one's annoying. A key detail, for years her parents had been pressuring us to buy a house with extra rooms. I didn't know why until not too long ago. So last year, my wife explained to me that her parents were retiring early to enjoy life. They were only 50 years old. They sold their house and most of their belongings, decided to spend their summers at the camper. So far, so good, but that's a really dumb idea in my mind. But here's the kicker, XD Lamal. The basis of their plan is that they plan on living with their kids for the rest of the year when the camping grounds are closed. The grounds close in September, so this means they need somewhere to go for the remaining eight months of the year. Now I should mention that they only have two children, my wife and her sister. This is their plan until they die. All their money is going into seeing the world and camping and nothing else. If they ever get sick and can't travel anymore, you've got it. It's now your responsibility because they'll have no money for a special care home or a nurse by then. I told her that I'm not okay with this. We have a child and I'm looking forward to the day when we're done raising him and get to do the things that we want. To me, living with her parents, seeing them every day at every meal, watching TV with us is a nightmare scenario. I do like them, so that's not an issue. I just don't want to be burdened by an older couple that I would essentially be responsible to feed and house. Thankfully, my wife totally agreed that it's a garbage idea. We have our own life to live. They don't show it much, but I can tell that they're offended and feel rejected. But honestly, this is a take-take situation, and when I get to that age, I won't have the luxury of living off my kid, and I certainly would feel like a POS if I expected that of them. And no, you're not going to mooch off of me when I'll probably have to work till I'm 75. So my question is, am I a jerk? I feel like I'm gonna work my butt off, I wanna enjoy my free time. I don't want to take care of an older couple that decided that they should quit their responsibilities and pawn them off on their kids who are just starting their married lives. The sister is okay with this and they spent all of their winter and spring there, but not without issues. Personally, I feel this is gross entitlement. Seriously. Of course, I would take care of my parents if they fell ill or on hard times, but who just decides to live off of other people just because? Here, here. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode, uh, st stay tuned for another one, I'll be back tomorrow. Tell me what you thought of this one in the comments, and um, I'll see you later. Have a good day!